Well, good evening one, good evening all. Well, okay, the three. Three is that are listening. Um, how we all been? Good, yes? Welcome to episode 39 of Talkback Tech, recorded on Tuesday the 6th of September. TBT is a show where the listeners, that'll be you guys, decide what we talk about. We do this live Tuesday nights from whenever we feel like it, 7 o'clock-ish, at live.thesecrethub.com. Just to let you know, you can be part of the show. You can email me on tbt at thesecrethub.com. You can Skype me on ATH Calling. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Tomkinson, M R T O M K I N S O N, and also Aussie TBT. Or you can visit the TBT homepage, talkbacktech.com. Uh, you can't do a lot there at the moment because things are broken. <laughs> But all the uh, you can get the feed information for the podcast, um, or you can do that on iTunes. Just search for Talkback Tech on iTunes, and for some reason it stopped working on the Listen app in the last couple of weeks on Android. So I'm going to have to fix that. And also there's a uh, TBT Facebook fan pagey thing. Just search for Talkback Tech, and uh, you'll find us there. I'm your host, Will. Uh, you guys know um, Michael or Frosty? How you doing, mate? How you going, fellas? Good, good. Um, and just quickly, the reason none of us had a show last night is we were sick or unavailable uh, last week. And Steve or Disgruntled Tech is still crook this week, uh, so there won't be any won't be any Android show this week either. Uh, but we figured we better push out a TBT just to let you know that we're still around. Um, but there will be, hopefully, the Android show back next week. Um, and I will be routing a phone live on air. So there'll be one to watch out for. So, Frosty, mate, how's things? Good. Very good. I managed to pick myself up an A500 on the weekend. Uh, oh, did you just? You managed to. Iconia. <laughs> you just happened to wander <laughs> past one, did you? <laughs> yeah, just happened to see them on the internet. At cheapest, cheapest chips. That was three hundred and eighty-six dollars. They have come down a lot. They were what nearly seven hundred dollars when they come out, weren't they? Um, well, this is only something. the Wi-Fi one. Um, but it uh, had on the sticker five hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah, six hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I did see them dearer than that as well. But have you had much of a chance to play with it? I've had a little bit of a play with it. I had a bit of uh, trouble updating it to 3.1 I tried a couple of times and it got to the unzipping part and then it actually failed I don't know why but what, third time's what a charm they say do the ship with uh, 3.0.1 uh, okay because I know that it can sometimes be simple things like uh, the date or the time can be set wrong so Sometimes it's just simple things can cause it to fail. Yeah. Who knows? Um, you might have been holding your tongue wrong. You know, you just don't know. Probably. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, well, you'll have a, a week to play with that and let us know what it's like and you can do a review next week on the Android show, which follows, um, what's this show? Talkback Tech. <laughs> TV, TV. <laughs> yeah, it's only been 12 months. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we'd nearly would be we'd be getting close to twelve months. Yeah, another couple of weeks. I think another couple of weeks. We're, We're a few shows behind because something. yeah, I think Fortnite, something like that. We're you know yep. a few shows behind for various things like last week when no one was available, you know. But uh, yep, stuck at it for twelve months, so it's all down. It's all uphill from here. <laughs> That's it. So, uh, yes. And I've had a pretty boring... Well, actually, I have a I have an Android tablet coming as well. Uh, you know, I don't know if you know, 12 months ago, or probably 9 months ago, I got the Pando Pad from uh, Dodo. Oh, um, yeah. Which it wasn't a bad little thing for for the price the sound um, board yeah i've actually <laughs> got to send that back because the the charge port things died in it 
but um, yeah, it wasn't a bad little device. Um, but they have a new one out now. They've got the new, what are they calling it? The ZTE pad. Um, okay. Same size. It's still a seven-inch touchscreen, but it's running um, Android two point two. Um, it's got quad band GSM three G built in. Um, it's got uh, three megapixel camera. It's got Bluetooth. It's got a lot of stuff that the other one didn't have. So okay, it's got a. The only thing I can't find about it is the. Um, I can't find the CPU, but <clears throat> yeah, it's got a built-in FM radio. So it'd be interested to see how much different or better or worse that is and you know so that should be hopefully here by next week um yep maybe the week after just depending on how long it takes them to get off their satchels and post it um (laughs) waiting on australia post now well that's yeah part of the problem too um that can be painful waiting for australian post to do anything so, oh, yeah. um, just quickly, <laughs> oh, actually, we'll talk about uh, the follow-up story we had last time. Um, you were talking about your my, uh, my Wi-Fi, yeah, your boss's laptop. Wi-Fi problem. Yep. Yeah. Well, he had um, he found out what part of the problem was. Was McAfee was running so. Uh, CPU intensive <laughs> that it wasn't letting him do any um, Internet Explorer or any other um, browsers. So yeah, he had to kill the process and away he went. Bit of a resource hog. Yeah. It was Sorry. running about 90 something percent, he said. <laughs> it's a netbook, so wasn't it? Was basically killing the... Yeah, it was a netbook. So yeah. it was basically just killing the CPU. There's, um, when you're running things like netbooks, you have to be really wary about everything you put on it. Um, there's a program called Panda Antivirus that actually, let me just, Panda Security. It's actually a cloud-based, um, antivirus that won't load. Um... (laughs) And they only put a very small program uh, on your actual system itself. It's only a little .exe file that basically sends everything to the net. And instead of having to store all the you know the data files and all, everything like that. Um, on your system and have to take up memory to have it all resident in memory it just uses yep. the cloud so while well, you're online it basically opens a file and then checks it against known vulnerabilities and then closes it and then checks the next one so it's pretty cool because it's so lightweight um, yep. then you can run you know AVG things like that so you just have to be wary anything vet mcafee norton anything like that to stay away from because they're really heavy yeah even uh avg is getting heavy avast isn't too bad bulldog used to be okay I but use, i haven't uh, used it for a while i use microsoft um security essentials essentials which yeah. if you've got windows 7 yeah um yep. i use it as well as well Traditionally, I don't run a virus scanner on my computer. I run them on the other ones, but I won't run them on mine. Um, yeah. But I had a problem on the weekend where I backed up some files for somebody else and then I got a file off them. Okay. So, and then because I had no virus scanner, it went rampant before I even had a chance to to do anything um 
I did clean it out. It took me four or five hours to get to it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was a Trojan. Uh, and basically what it oh, would yeah. do was it would just randomly make up file names and just start writing them to your hard drive. So it was slowly f- filling your hard drive. Um, oh. So, but I got away with it in the end because I, um, yeah, I, I sort of noticed it before it got too out of control and I was able to yep. I was able to sort of do something about it um, but yeah now I just because of I'm backing up other people's systems I'm running um, a vast but I'm also running the Microsoft security essentials as well um, just as a double sort of protection yep. because my system's now the file server as well as my main system so it's got files coming in from all over the place so I figure if I can run a couple of different (laughs) things hopefully that won't be a problem again because I don't get viruses myself because the way I manage what I browse you know but uh, I wasn't overly impressed I tell you I haven't had a virus in years (laughs) so just goes to yeah, show it's been you. A long time you know. since I've had a virus. Yeah, um, but you know the good old fallbacks, the uh, the spybot search and destroy, and um, out of wear and hot brick. You know all the good old programs. <laughs> they're still as reliable as ever. Just Hitman Pro. Yep. You know they're all files I've got sitting in a folder. They're all just named like A, B, C, D, E, and one, two, three, four, dot exe. So when a, the virus actually does go looking for them, it doesn't recognise them because they're not named after what they actually are. So not supposed to be names. Yeah. So by naming them a weird name, I know what they are, but the virus won't delete them. So they're always yep. sitting on the system ready to go. Well, like Hitman, for rain. example. Yeah, so like Hitman, um, you can actually run from the EXE. You haven't even got to install it. So if you call it, you know, 12345.exe, if you do get a virus, yeah. you can just run it straight away and it can start to get on top of the problem. So it's a handy um, thing. And it's also handy to have a Linux boot USB or CD. Um for a couple of reasons one is it's good for if you need to do a system recovery or you need to get into the system to get files off it or something like that but also if you do get a virus it's handy to have for that reason so if um you can just throw the disk in boot up to a completely isolated system and you know do it from there so yeah that's correct so that was good. I've always, got a, I've always got a copy of Ubuntu sitting around somewhere. Yeah, you know, or even uh, even DSL, you know, damn small Linux. You can it's nothing. It's four meg or five meg, you know. <laughs> I've actually got I've got it on a ancient flash drive. I think it's a sixty four meg flash drive. It's one of the first ones that come out. Um, <laughs> it's thirty two meg or sixty four meg. I've got that. Um, spin right and a couple other programs all on this <laughs> million year old flash drive so um, and it still works yeah yeah it still works it was a actually it was a verbatim so it it was you know, I okay. think at the time I think, actually I think it's 64 meg because at the time it was the biggest flash drive you could get and it was four hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. <laughs> All right. It was uh, my first MP3 player. That was a hundred and twenty-eight meg, and that was two hundred and forty dollars, I think. Was that the Sony, the little round? No, it was no? just some. No, it was a Targus or something. I think it was called. Oh yeah. It I've was still the, got my. It was the cheapest. <laughs> Somewhere I've still got a little Sony MP3 player um, 
It was a little round thing. It was 128 meg. Uh, <laughs> it was probably a knockoff of that. Uh, I think it was four or five hundred dollars when it came out. Um, it used a AAA battery that used to last for 80 hours. Um, tell you what. To this day, that thing still has the best sound out of any MP3 player I've ever listened to. Because it actually had the proper Sony sound chips in it. Ah, yeah. So, the sound out of that thing was amazing. Um, Yep. But, and it still works. (laughs) The only problem is it needs to put the MP3s on it. They've got to be in their proprietary format so that they were smaller. It compressed them again. Um, oh, was that that um, A track or something? Was it something like that? And the but the program only works on Windows three point one, Windows ninety five, and Windows ninety eight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to boot up the I old. Am. I can get it working in um, in XP if I boot up in safe mode and play with the memory mapping and stuff. <laughs> okay. So. I think the songs on it are about six or seven year old. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you turn it on and you get like mbop and. <laughs> Actually, no, it'd be longer than that. When when was that? That was like ninety five, ninety six. So that's how old yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like the top twenty five songs on it. There's like wannabe mbop. Um, sexy eyes or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty sad, really. Oh dear. Um, yeah, but I mean, as I said, it still works. You know, I've been through dozens of cheap MP3 players in that same period of time. So. Yep. But I still don't know how MP3 players are so popular now that every phone on the market plays MP3s. Well, that's it. I use I use my um iPhone at work all the time. Yeah. For MP3s or podcasts or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Audio books. You know, it's yeah. I don't understand how they're still selling X amount of millions of iPods every year, not including the third party MP3 players. You know got me stuffed yeah, even if you sure go under the... it was like they sell six million ipods a quarter or if it yeah it sounds about like right i think it was something stupid and uh, to be honest the ipod touch which is one of their biggest sellers is yeah. the same price as an iphone but you can't make phone calls on it <laughs> <laughs> and really it's dearer than an iphone because you can't get it subsidized so no I don't know what that's about. There's actually uh, Android based on eBay. There's Android based. They look exactly like an iPhone. They run Android, and that and they're designed as an MP3 player. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Didn't like a Samsung bring out a Galaxy player or something like that. Uh, actually, yeah, they may have. Now that you mention it, um, yeah, it was ex- exactly the same as um the Galaxy um, smartphone, but just a media player. Mm. Yeah, that's right. It was too. I'm just seeing if I can find it at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's Samsung Galaxy player. There you go. That's what it was called. Samsung's answer to the to the iPod Touch. So, I actually forgotten about that. That's how well that's sold. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's Quality bit of gear, that. Hey? Picture on the screen. Yep. It's, uh... Looks exactly the same as the Galaxy phone. Yeah. It's even got the same button layout and everything. <laughs> Hardware specs, 800 megahertz processor running Android 2.1, 16 gig internal, uh, 3.2 inch display, supports audio, video, FM radio, 2 megapixel camera, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 
So basically, it's the phone without the 3G. <laughs> you know, like... I don't. I never understood that. Especially not for the price they charge. Did you see all the latest news coming out from this IFA over in Germany? About the... Um, Samsung Note, I think it was. Where is it? The what? Uh, it was called the Samsung Note, Samsung Galaxy Note. It has a 1.4 gigahertz dual core processor, and it has a 5.3 inch screen. I think it was. It's absolutely monster. That's a big screen. Yeah, it's actually a phone too. Well, that's all right. It's thin. Scheduled, scheduled to come out later this year. Well, then, that gives you an idea of the size of it. It comes with a stylus pen. Yeah. Well, that gives you an idea of the size. Like, you look at that, and, you know, you compare that to... Whoops. You know, a normal phone. Like, that's... Mm. You know, I can easily wrap my hands around that, but you look at that. Um, that's got a 3.7 inch screen, isn't it? Yeah, or 3.7 or 3.9. Yeah. And that's what, 5... 4.3 inches. 5.3, so it's only an inch, or inch and a, inch and a bit, inch and a half, maybe, difference, but yeah. It's a big screen. It's, uh, wasn't that the same size as that other Galaxy thing, the other Samsung thing they bought out a year or so ago? Uh. They had another thing. It was almost like a, I don't know if it was a small tablet or a big phone. I'm pretty sure it was Samsung. Uh, oh, the, the Galaxy S2, that was a four and a half inch screen. Yeah. So this is half an inch bigger again. <laughs> so. Yeah. Or 0.8 inches bigger. Mm. So, yeah. It'll be interesting. I will, I'd like to play with... For me, I think it'd be great because I've got stubby fingers and fairly big hands. Yep. So, on a smaller phone, it's actually quite awkward for me to type, you know. But I think on something okay. like that, I think that'd be perfect for me because on my 7-inch pad, I can thumb... T like, if I hold it in landscape mode, I can thumb type quite easily on that. So... We'll see. Yep. That could be pretty cool. Oh, did you see also at that IFA? Um, it was the Samsung 7.7 um, .7 inch tablet. Tablet. Got taken off display. Yeah, I heard something Apple, about that. Apple, yeah, because of the Apple lawsuit they got going at the moment. Samsung oh, you're kidding. Apple lawsuit. Yeah, it actually had a sticker on it when they were showing it. It said, not for sale in Germany. And then um, they have actually taken it off display and covered up all the <laughs> Galaxy 7.7 .7 signs and everything. But I thought that it said, well, to start with, it's a different size, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a different size to the, the Apple. So they've got I no think, case. But what was it two or three days part ago? Of their... Hey. Go ahead. I was going to say, was it two or three uh, days ago? They said the German court said that they wouldn't allow it to be taken off the market because it'd be anti-competitive. <laughs> and that was only a couple of days ago. I remember reading that. Yeah, but they've just got an injunction to stop displaying it or something. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's ridiculous. Because it's need to be... part of this patent infringement case I think patent the whole patent system needs to be overhauled because you know patents weren't patents were designed like for example somebody invented a light bulb now the way patents are being fought now it means that we would still be using a vacuum-filled 
glass sphere, football shaped sphere with a bamboo filament because that's the original light bulb that the patent was taken out on. And working under the same premise, that's what we should should still be using. But because, you know, over the years, they've changed the design, they've gone to tungsten filled bulbs and then they've gone to the xenon ones and they've changed the filaments and, you know, they use tungsten filaments in xenon filled chambers now. Um, not to mention fluoros and all that. If they attacked the original patent as hard then as they have now with the uh, Apple, for example, then we'd still <laughs> all be on you know four watt light bulbs. So I don't understand. Pa- patents patents are there to stop somebody else selling the same product you're selling. So it basically means that the manufacturer who's designing the iPhone can't then go and sell the iPhone. That's all the patent means. It doesn't mean that you can't make something similar. You know. Um, That's it. it. It's the same reason copyright is there to protect the... It's not there to protect the artist or the record label or all these excuses they fall behind. Copyright is there to basically protect the creativity of the artists. The The idea of copyright is to make everybody think about what they're doing and what they're creating so that they can be creative and make something different and not make something the same as everyone else. But once again, the copyright law gets taken way out of whack and you know it's the same situation that anything that's remotely similar or remotely well actually more to the point not what the record labels want if that goes against even something minute they'd throw a lawsuit at someone you look at the new youtube youtube um things if you have any background music at all if you have say you're filming your son or daughter at a Christmas play, for example, um, and they quote, they sing, you know, Merry Christmas, or they quote something, in uh, a line out of the Bible, or something like that, although that's different because that's Creative Commons, but, um, you know, yeah, if they sing Merry Christmas, for example, then you can't put that video on YouTube because it's a copyright violation. <laughs> You know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's got nothing to do with the original concept of what copyright was, which was to which was to make people think about what they're doing and be creative. It's got nothing to do with that. Now it's purely revenue raising, because what we want to do is we want you to only get this song from us the way that we want to give it to you, and if and if, and if you happen to hear it on YouTube and then go, ooh, that's a really good song. I think I might want to buy it. You couldn't possibly, you know, do that. So, it's, uh, anyway. One of Glenn's videos got busted for copyright infringement, didn't it? Did it? Oh, one yeah, the, it said something about that. Uh, one of the county, oh, I don't know, whatever it was, the show Oh, thing. the show one. It had a bit of music in the background. Yeah. And actually, I've got a YouTube video up that um, I might even show it just to show the sort of thing I'm talking about. It's still up. They haven't taken it down um, yet. Let's see. Videos. I love the fact there's a... um, Do you want to put advertising on this? They, well, they say they may put advertising on it. Okay. You'll notice in my lineup, I actually, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a folder there called Content ID Matches, which is a recent thing. So you click on that, and it shows you any videos that they think may have um, infringement in the Content ID. Now, under this video, in the description, I have written, the music track to this is The Secret Life of Sophia, is the band and 54 50 no 
Secret Life of Sophia is the song, and 5014ers is the band. And then I give them the website, which is freeindie.com, blah, blah, blah. And if you go to the website, you'll find it's Creative Commons. You're allowed to use it as long as you put that up, basically. Now, if I yep. click on my... And then it says, match third-party content. So if I click on view copyright info, info according to... According to the administrated by these entities, and the entity is the Orchid Music, and the content is sound recording, it belongs to them. Um, <laughs> to start with, I have no idea who Orchid or Orchid Music is. Secondly, it's not their song, and I filled out a dispute because you can dispute the claims, copyright claims. Um, okay. So I'd, I filled out a dispute for it, and that was like three months ago, and it's still pending. So they're in a huge hurry to take it down, but uh, they don't mind making you wait, you know. So I don't know. It's just getting annoying. Um, and see, the stupid part is, if I was let's say, a news program, like 7pm Project, for example, and I was talking about an artist, <coughs> then I can quite easily play, you know, 30 or 40 seconds of that artist's song, or I could play even a whole song or two in the background and talk over the top of it, because it's commenting on the artist, or it's satire, or, you know, it's these things you're allowed to do. You can't do that on YouTube. You can't do that on iTunes. You know, that's why Mark, I don't know if you guys remember, but Mark tried to do a show commenting uh, on music called My Tunes. Yeah, well, he, he was using 30-second um, clips or something, wasn't he? Yeah, which you're allowed to do unless you want to put it on iTunes because iTunes says there's no copyrighted material, despite the fact that when you're commenting on a show, you're allowed to... Use it as an example. So, I don't know. Anyway, me ranting again. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, a couple of questions quickly. Um, these have come from Milo, who I think I think his website is uh, miloguy dot com from memory. Yeah, and. Uh, check it out him and his old man are currently um traversing around the countryside so he'll keep you up to date on his blog um so yeah you can go to yeah www.miloguy.com um he has a couple of questions one is he wants to know sometimes when you plug in a usb device for example a hard drive and it'll work and you'll plug it in again the next time um, and it doesn't work or it doesn't recognise properly or it recognises but doesn't work correctly um, he wants to know what causes that uh, I had to find a bit more information turns out he's using a hub it is a powered hub but it's like a six port hub um, so the short answer is you're basically overloading USB. Whether it there's two ways to overload a USB port. One is you draw more than 150 milliamps from the port. Officially, USB is supposed to support 200 milliamps, but from experience, I've always found if you pull more than 150, the ports start getting a bit flaky, and that's total draw. Um, for each hub so just because you've got six USB ports on your system doesn't mean you've got six hubs you've probably in most cases will have three hubs in most cases each two ports pair up so if you've got six ports you'll actually have three separate USB circuits on some boards like the Pentium system sitting over there it actually has uh, eight USB ports on two hubs so it's four ports on a hub so that 150 milliamps is 
on that particular hub. So just bear that in mind that like a webcam may draw 120. So you could probably draw on one, let's say you draw 120 for your webcam and 15 or 20 for your mouse. So that's about the limit you can run on that one. And then on the next one, you might do, let's say, a joystick and an external hard drive. Now, if you're using a small two and a half inch portable drive, like a Go Drive or something like that, um, they generally use the USB port power. Uh, and a lot of the times they'll even have two USB, like a piggyback sort of USB plug. So there's two USB plugs. Um, so that it pulls the power from two different USB ports. Um, in which case, that's all you can use. If it's one of those sort of ones, you, you can't really use those through a hub because the hub won't supply enough power. Um, and you, if you are using it on the computer, you have to make sure that it's on its own separate internal hub in the computer. Um, and if it's an external drive, uh, a, ex a bigger backup drive that uses external power you don't really have that problem because it's not pulling the power from the USB port but you can run into another problem especially if it's through a hub is data throughput becomes an issue so for example you'll even notice that if you try and run two webcams on the same USB port you'll have the same problem because it gets to the point where you can't physically push enough data through the port um, for it to function so if it's erroring out when you plug it in you just have to bear in mind what else you're running it with um, there are some things you can like my microphone for example this is the USB microphone I run this and my mouse on the same port um, because this draws what they call phantom power which well, actually, um, Frosty doesn't have that on his mic, but Glenn has it on his. You draw phantom power, which is 48 volt signal to power the condenser in the mic. This mic has phantom power, so it does draw it off the USB port. So if I run it with a webcam, for example, I don't have enough power to run it properly. Um, so you just have to think about the combinations, but because of the way there's very low data transmission with this microphone I can run an extension cable I've actually got a 2 meter extension cable well probably actually closer to a 3 meter extension cable running on this microphone as Frosty will tell you when I kicked it before and had to climb on the bench to <laughs> <laughs> find out why it wasn't working um, but a webcam for example you probably if it's a really good quality cable a, a normal USB male to female passive cable any more than probably 30 centimeters 45 centimeters running on a webcam you're going to have problems you're going to start getting in intermittent connections um, same on external hard drives because of the amount of data the longer you push it down a cable the more problems you're going to have if you do need to extend them there are things called active USB cables which are powered or very very high quality USB cables that you can run reasonable lengths um, and for some cameras I don't know if they work on other devices but I know they work on USB cameras you can actually get um, Balance or Balance or whatever you want to call them um, they're basically a USB, um, you got a USB plug on one end, and they've got a Cat5 plug on the other end. So you plug it into a USB port, you run a Cat5 cable to the other end, you know, two or three hundred meters away, and as long as you've got power at the other end to plug into the other one, um, y you're right, you'll cover that distance. So. Um, so yeah generally if you've got an intermittent problem it's usually a bad cable or an overloaded port um, 
Do you have anything to add to that, Frosty? I think you've just about covered it all there. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 actually funny. It was something that was never really a problem until USB came in. Um, USB was really the first device, and now we've got the same problems with FireWire, DVI, um, Cat5. Uh, what else? Um, even USB three, um, lightning bolt. They all actually now have length issues. Like there's a limit to the length. But you know, in the old good old fashioned days, uh, parallel serial ports. <laughs> you could run those cables as long as you wanted to. I remember running <laughs> a parallel Laplink cable. <laughs> from my bedroom all the way down we had we're on two acres the house is at front of the block and the shed was at the back of the block yeah and i remember running a little old actually i think it was a, a little old apple notebook or laptop was had a built-in 96k board modem and it used to sit in the house with fax software running and lap link and then I ran a parallel cable that I made myself all the way down to the back of the block <laughs> plugged into this <laughs> old XT or may have been a 286 yeah, it must have been 286 because it had a colour screen so it would have been my 286 system down the back running another copy of lap link uh, purely so that I could send and receive faxes <laughs> Uh, those were the good old days. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, and the same thing applies with FireWire, um, you know, DVI. It comes down to the theoretical maximum limit of that particular cable, also the quality of the cable and the device you're plugging in. So, my webcam, my uh, Sony Handycam that I have up there I have a 5 meter cable running to it and it's quite happy um, a friend of mine has a firewire mixer and if you put any cable longer than about 30 centimeters to it it just doesn't want to work so some devices are more fussy than others does I it guess. have its own power? the mixer? yeah yeah um, okay uh, I think it's because it shoves so much data so much to see the webcam is only forcing data into the system it doesn't really get any data from the system whereas okay. the mixer because it's it can be fully software controlled as well so it's constantly sending data in both directions so uh, right. I think if it's a lot of data um, maybe you know probably a, a really good quality cable you know, we put like a $30 cable on it, but I mean, you know, one of those, even though I hate using those monster cables, um, they are good quality, you know, but I refuse to pay $110 for a cable. So, we you just ordered it. They said, oh, do you want a HDMI cable? And he oh, pulled yeah. up a monster HDMI cable. And I said, no, mate, I've got one, I'm right. Yeah, that's it. We just ordered for a friend of mine... Uh, a 10 meter no well, yeah a 10 meter HDMI cable um, on eBay for like I don't know 36 bucks or something <laughs> I bought so. I bought a 10 meter one off eBay it was $55 or something when yeah. I bought it and I have not had a problem with it no but that's they reckon it. that that's about the limits to depends um, on what HDMI See, HDMI is a tricky little critter too because you've got five different... I think you've got five different specs yeah. or four different specs. Yeah, you've, got you've got basically like 1, 2, 2.2, 2 2.3, 3 and 3.5 or something. Um, and the last two are really high throughput because they're Blu-ray 3D. So they're super high bandwidth. But I think basically anything else, if you're not doing 3D Blu-ray, 
you should be pretty right. No. <laughs> um, I have had one that must have had a just a must have had a broken strand, or it must have had a little bit of break in the shielding, because every so often you'd get when you had a fairly white screen, you'd get little green pixels occasionally. Um, okay. As soon as we changed the cable, it was fine. So it just must have just some, it, it only did it if you had a lot of a lot of white. So um, that was yeah, really weird. I had a problem with my Mac Mini when I set that up as my uh, home theater PC. Mm. I um I used an old HDMI cable that I had sitting around. Yep. And I could not get audio. Oh, For the right. life of me, I couldn't get any audio out of it. And I tried different things, reinstalling and everything, re-updating, and then all of a sudden I just thought, hang on, I might just change the cable, see if that <laughs> helps. Bang, straight away, audio. Yeah. No, that's it. It's um. It's probably see, it must have been a uh, one or two spec cable, you know. Yeah. Well, it's in the bin now. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, it's once you start going. See, it's strange because digital. When you think about digital, you think about it's on or off. There's nothing in between. Like you think about a mobile phone. In the good old days of analog, the signal would just get noisier and noisier and noisier, but you could generally get a signal out, like a UHF radio. That's it. But once you get a digital phone, it's on or off. There's nothing in between. But then you get strange exceptions to that rule. Like I had a mouse that had a dicky cable, and you could move the mouse up and down and right, I think, but you couldn't move it left. And you could use the right mouse button, but not the left mouse button. You know, and <laughs> it's because the cable was weird even though it's a digital cable and all those digital signals are all traveling down the cable in exactly the same way but for some particular reason you know it will let through let's say you know left is zero zero and right is zero one and up is one one and down is one zero but for some reason it wouldn't let in it wouldn't let the zero zero go through but it let all the other signals go through so, <laughs> it's bizarre. I don't know how it happens sometimes. Can't pick it. Um, yeah, another with these new HDMI cables, they all run off certain frequencies. Uh, oh, on. yeah, that's right. They split the frequencies so they can transmit different packets of data at the same time. Yeah. So, like, with 3D, they can transmit the left and the right eye at the same time th through two different, yeah, frequencies. That's why, I see, that that's the new cable, so that's they're really expensive, I think. So, it's all... I don't know. You want to uh, learn about that? Listen to uh, Home Theatre Geeks with uh, Chris... Oh, the Twitter Marquois? network. Chris Marqua, I think his name is. Um, yeah. No, he's a... Uh, oh, he's a photographer. Yeah, that's right. I can't think of the home theatre guy. But, uh, yeah, listen to them. And you want to get confused about cables? <laughs> that's a show to listen to. <laughs> so. Um, another question, quickly, that I had as well. Um was I don't know <laughs> um, Milo also wanted to know Scott Wilkinson there you go that's who it was editor of AV Mag he's got some great stories to tell too it's really good listen listening here's uh, Heil actually episode 72 the history on Heil mics that was great how he developed those Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, listen to that. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It is. So, 
Had some good um, stories in there. Yeah, he's been around. <laughs> Certainly been around. USB to serial PA. Really? <laughs> You're that desperate? <laughs> wow. There's a there's another converter I forgot about. USB to serial converters. Oh, dear. Actually, I've got a uh, parallel. Well, USB to parallel converter because I've got a printer that's a parallel port and new systems don't have parallel ports on them. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so Milo was basically saying uh, he's got Windows 7 64-bit on his laptop at the moment. Um, I can't remember what program he was saying <coughs> um, he needed, but it only works in 32-bit. So he was wondering if it'd be worth multi-booting 32-64. And I asked him, I said, why you know what purpose are you running 64 other than the fact it came with the laptop you know um and it's because he's running four gig of ram so there's a couple of different answers to this yes you can run both versions of windows and it's fairly easy um windows 7 made it very easy they just you install it to a different directory so you can have them both on the same drive even and it's automatically sets up the petitions and everything uh, they made it quite easy on that but I think the more important question is do you need to run 64 now I was for six months I was running 64 uh, because I had four gig of RAM um, And to be honest, the amount of problems I had was far greater than the problems it solved. The compatibility issues, driver issues, um, some just trying to get... Actually, the biggest problem was trying to get the drivers to work properly. Uh, but even trying to get some applications to work properly was an issue. And after six months, I decided to go back to 32 um, now of course that gave me another problem because Windows 32 bits only supports actually 3.5 gig of RAM so I was left with a dilemma, do I go back to Windows 32 and lose 500 meg of RAM and then if I want to upgrade in the future I'm going to be in trouble because I can't put any more RAM in it um, and does that uh, offset the ease of use with drivers with software that you know the less hassle uh, so I came to a compromise I installed Windows 32 and then I installed a little program or a little registry hack that um, breaks the part in the registry I'm just trying to think of the name of it. I had it lined up and now I can't find it. But it breaks the registry that tells it to put the 3 gig RAM limit on. Um, so what it actually does is it changes that. So I have absolutely no problem at all running up to 16 gig of RAM. Um... I'm just trying to find the program. I've got it on here somewhere and I just cannot find it. But for me, that was the perfect solution because I no longer had to worry about you know, all the issues that came with 64. Um, and just to show you, if I go to here, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's... Um, you can see Windows 7 Ultimate. Um, so it's a 32-bit, because otherwise it would say, let's see down here, 32-bit operating system, running 4 gig of RAM. So, um, it even says it's genuine. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so to me, unless you need 64, 
then to be honest, it's just not worth the hassle. Um, yes, you can multi-boot. That does work. But then after you've installed both the 32-bit and the 64-bit windows, every application you use that you want to use in both of those, you have to install twice. You have to install two lots of Office. You have to install two lots of, you know, whatever you're using. Um, everything has to go on there twice into their own separate directories so they don't confuse each other. Um, yeah. And so... I don't think it's worth it to be honest. Um, Do you know if he's tried running compatibility mode? Yeah, it doesn't work apparently. Compatibility mode in Windows 7 isn't great. Um, okay. If the program almost wants to run but doesn't quite, then that will quite often fix it. But there are some programs yeah. that just it doesn't matter what you do, it won't run I've got that was the other thing I had a couple of programs that were the same just could not get them to work properly um, and even things you think would be designed to run in a 64 bit environment for, uh, I'll give you an example um, Flash there is no 64 bit version of Flash the, the Flash Adobe Flash that works under Chrome and Internet Explorer um, under 64-bit is a hack. It's a a compatibility mode version of Flash. So every time you load Flash comment or Flash um, media, media um, you actually use much, much more system resources to run the same application because it's not natively supported. Um which goes the same for things like Flash Media Encoder, which we're using, or I'm using, to stream to the live stream tonight. That doesn't natively support 64-bit, um, which you would think something that requires a lot of processor and a lot of memory would, but it doesn't. <laughs> um, but drivers is the big thing trying to get my camera drivers and trying to get my capture card drivers to work under windows 64 was so painful you know just in the end i'm just went back to 32 if you've got more than three and a half gig of ram throw the registry hack on there's there's half a dozen different ones um the one i use loads on boot um but as i said there's a few of them so you know, um, nobody. Me I've never had a problem with 64 bit. See, if you don't do anything unusual, you won't, um, because the system that you would have it on would be designed to run it. If that makes any sense. Yeah. But if I gave you, if I gave you one of these, which is a USB capture. EasyCap 2000. To get that to work under 64-bit Windows requires three hacked and modified driver files as well as a modified registry and a modified boot, um, boot sequence to boot into developer mode <laughs> for one driver. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, as I said, if if you're not straying from the straight and normal path, and everything you do works, I did notice some applications were quicker. Um, some things that actually supported, you know, 64-bit like Chrome, like Internet Explorer, um, Windows Live Movie Maker, uh, a couple of other programs I used that were actually natively 64-bit were maybe maybe 10% quicker you know so yeah you know if you've got it and it's working don't bother changing it but if you are going to be putting strange software or hardware into your system 
to save yourself a lot of hassle, just go back to 32 bit. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, you do what works, I suppose. <laughs> if it's working, if it's working, don't change it, you know. So, I think that's the uh the easiest way to to describe that. So, Alrighty. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, no, that's about it. Look what I found when I was digging through digging through some boxes the other day. I don't know if you can recognise that. <laughs> it's a... Uh, what is it? Thrustmaster. Thrustmaster. Flight thing. <laughs> it's got like I've got a Microsoft side I've got a Microsoft Sidewinder sitting around here somewhere yeah I had a force feedback Sidewinder until the force feedback part broke <laughs> um, it's been that long since I've used this I I don't own flight sims anymore so I was trying to find a free one um, and it took me so long to get back into the knack of using this again <laughs> in the end I just gave up <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't I can't use two hands I, I'm so used to using like just a D-pad you know a normal thing like that that once I go back to that actually I was I finally played um, well the beta version of Duke Nukem Forever um, okay it's really cool <laughs> but getting back into the whole um, what's it called keyboard mouse you know <laughs> sequence uh, <laughs> the was that oh no no don't use that nah no use you know normal arrow keys and you you like i always was a mouse player um okay right through right from wolfenstein right through doom juke quake you know i was always a mouse a mouse player um but over it's been that long I haven't played Duke in have to be nearly 10 years I think since the last time I played it and I probably had you know Duke car Kelly. car racing ones and stuff like that you know and for everything else you're either using the mouse or the keyboard so to get back into the habit of using both of them and getting the hand eye coordination going on <laughs> 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 took me uh, I played the f- first first level like four times before I could get the coordination happening so <laughs> tell you what though I wouldn't mind playing the full version the um the demo's only three levels but it's pretty cool so alright we shall see but um I've been buying a few cheap games on Steam and just having a bit of a play with them yeah well that's why I started playing Portal because it was free. Um, yep. It's actually a really good game. I wouldn't mind playing Portal 2, but I'm not, playing, I'm not paying $96 or whatever it is for it. Um, Dude, it's only like 30 or 40 bucks on Steam. Well, has it come down, has it? Last time I checked, I think it was still like... Actually, I think it was $67 last time I checked. I'm not paying $40 yeah, for it. it was, if it was 20 bucks, I'd buy it. I bought it when it was 50 I think. <laughs> So, what's that one that everyone's playing at the moment? Um, Portal 2, 29 US dollars. Oh, okay, like 25 bucks. Oh, for that price, it's probably worth buying. What's that one yep. that everyone's raving about at the moment? Um, uh, what is DT it? knows. He's uh, been playing it. What? Is Black it Ops? Modern Warfare? Black Ops? Black Ops, I think. That's Black the new Ops one, is the it? one that's out at the moment, Call of Duty. Cool, yeah. I think that's... Everybody seems to be playing that at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I don't have time to play games anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Juice X. That's it. That's the... Juice X. Yeah. The in thing. Or, or Deus is, X or whatever they call it. 
Five six. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the in thing at the moment. That's what all the young whippersnappers are playing. When I grew up, <laughs> we had t- we had text based turn by turn games like Zork. <laughs> None of this fandangled shoot 'em up. <laughs> you do know if that you buy Black Ops, you can't play Zork on that. Yeah, I heard that in the start menu or something. There's a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, that'd be pretty cool. I'd spend how much money on a PS3 or an Xbox 360 to play Zork? <laughs> <laughs> Just so you can play Zork. Yeah, you can actually. There's actually a. Um, uh, I'm just trying to find it. There's actually a Zork. There we go. Created. Welcome to Zork Originally Dungeon version was created 11th of March '91, and then it was modded to PHP, which is what this is. On August 05, the 33 users playing is all currently online. 29 have not logged in. <laughs> and then the good old, you're in an open field west of a big white house with a boarded front door. There is a small mailbox here. Then let's go look. Great. Uh, what do we do? We go west, don't we? Can we go west? You're in a forest with trees in all directions around you. <laughs> <laughs> I think last time I played this, I got trapped in the dungeon. Oh, no. I don't even know. I can't remember anymore. Okay, fine. South. You're in a dimly lit forest with large trees all around to the east. There appears to be sunlight. Don't You're in a clearing. Towards the light. <laughs> Uh, surrounding pile of leaves on the ground. Take leaves. Match? Taken. A grating appears on the ground. Open. Grate. The grate is locked. Not great. Hit it with leaves. <laughs> 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 I've known strange people, but attacking a great. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm going to have to play that now. <laughs> oh, we've lost him. <laughs> oh, that's a classic. Alrighty. For the third time, let's wrap this up. Um, they can get a hold of you on... I'm going to get it right this time. Get a hold of you on Twitter at Frosty, which is F-R-0-5-T. F-R-0-5-T. Why? There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> On Twitter? <laughs> Why? Because On we Twitter. love you. M-O-U-S. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you can get a hold of me at uh, Mr. Tomkinson, M-R-T-O-M-K-I-N-S-O-N, or, and, or, either, either, Aussie T-B-T, if you wish. Um, I need to get more active on the Twitters. I'm slack. I'm too busy working. Uh, the easiest way is to go to Talkback Tech. Uh, and actually, that's not going to work because I just realised I have to put the contact information back up there because that site fell apart for some reason. Anywho, um, thanks for listening, guys. Remember, there is an Android show, although there was a beta or an alpha two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And next week... We'll have the beta. So, DT, Hopefully get better. DT's back next week. Yeah, he's, he's going to get better. I'll have to drag him by the scruff of the ears if your ears has <laughs> scruffs um, to do the show next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, guys. Thanks for watching, listening, consuming, and however you do it. And actually, send us an email. Let us know how you do consume the media what's you know what's your preferred way of doing it all right guys thank you see you later now if i press the right button (laughs) see you frosty see ya